Hey guys, it's Steve from Exploding Dice Gaming here and welcome to the next part of our Forge World modelling series. So, um, we've washed all of the components of our uh, Greater Demon of Slanash here um, and uh, we're ready to start prepping all the parts for assembly. Now the absolute first thing you're going to want to do is put a new blade in your Hobbycraft knife and the reason why you want to do that is because a, a brand new blade is obviously sharper uh, which means you're going to get a cleaner cut and it's also going to be safer because you're going to have to use less pressure in order to make the cuts so that's the absolute first thing you want to do um, you're also going to need a pair of clippers um, you may or you also may or may not need a razor saw um, should probably be okay for this one um, but some larger uh, some larger components you might need a razor saw to cut some of these gates off um, mold scraping, mold line scraping tool, um, always useful. You'll also need some files. So I've got two of uh, varying grits here. So we've got one really, really fine one, and one slightly more coarse one. Um, and I also have this set that I picked up, um, which is just uh, uh, a set of uh, kind of basic modelling files. Um, and these are these have got quite a coarse grit on them, so they're really good for uh, getting some larger components smoothed down before you finish them off with with one of these with one of these two. Um, and you'll also need some sandpaper. So I've uh, bought some sheets of varying grades of sandpaper here, um, and you're also going to want one of these. Now this is a just a basic dust mask. Um, which actually I use uh, usually for um, uh, when I'm spray painting using my airbrush as you can tell by the, by the purple paint there. Um, now the reason why you want to do this is because, you, the reason why you want one of these um, is because when you're f uh, sanding or filing Forge World resin it produces a very very fine dust um, and you don't really want to be breathing that in. It's not dangerous but it, again I've there's been times when I've been sanding Forge World stuff down and I've had a bit of a sore throat for a couple of days afterwards because I breathed the dust in. Um, so uh, a dust mask is a pretty good idea. We'll start working on this claw here. And the first thing you need to do, I sort of apologies for the lighting situation here, sorry I realise it's not that good, um, is uh, cut this, cut these gates off. So you just take your clippers and just snip it off like that, dead simple. So you can see we've cut it off a little bit away from the actual join where the component is gonna join onto the rest of the body. Um, and I've done that because um, uh, you want to cut the rest of, cut most of it off, um, but then also just gently nibble away at this bit um, until, you've, uh, until you've gotten rid of the whole of the, uh, the whole of this stalk here. Um, and you literally, you just, Gently snip this off closer and closer to the join until you've got it roughly where it needs to be. Now this takes a little bit of time. Um, in fact, uh, like with anything to do with Forge World, um, it all takes quite a bit of time to do. Um, most Forge World models uh, can be easily described as a, a labour of love. Um, especially something like this one um, but uh, the more time you spend on this stage cleaning everything up the better your model's going to look when it's finished so it really does pay to take a bit of extra time over it and uh, just make sure you get it right and then we can just offer it up to the offer it up to the body and uh, we can just see what kind of join we get so just offer it up like that So we'll have a look at this bit now, because um, this has got a few different bits on it that we'll need to cut off. So first off, we need to we need to get rid of this big gate on the bottom here. So uh, similar principle. We'll just uh, we'll just use our clippers, and then we'll just snip off a little bit away from the the actual detail of the model. Um, as you can see, I've snipped it just there. Um, so that you don't actually accidentally damage any of the detail. 
um, and uh, same with these feet as well. So we'll just snip that off. In fact, this, this, these bits are a little bit thicker, so you want to be a little bit careful with these. Just kind of nibble through, because the last thing you want to do is damage your model. So just be careful and just snip it through. There we go. So um, with this bit in particular, because it was joined, it was actually joined in four places. So we got we had one join there, one join on either side of the loincloth there, and then another join on the other foot. Um, you want to be careful with that because sometimes there's a little bit of tension in these parts, um, and you don't want to you don't want it to snap off and potentially damage or break one of the legs off. So uh, just be careful about that. So we'll uh, we'll just cut the rest of this the rest of this gate off. And uh, let's get the rest of this bit off here. Um, I will probably cut these bits off as well um, because I'm, I'm planning on pinning this model to the base, so um, I'll probably cut these off too. But I won't do that just now, I won't make you watch me do that. On the inside of this leg here, on the inside of the uh, knee kneecap there, and just down the base of the calf, um, you can see we've got some uh, bits of flash or scrim. Um, so we can trim that off quite easily by using a mold line tool. So you just hold the tool in your hand and then you just scrape off like so. So it's a bit it's a bit tricky to show you guys because because uh, of the lighting and uh, the fact that I'm left-handed I might have to experiment with moving the camera around to the other side for the next bit. Okay, so that's pretty good. Just a little bit more on the ankle there. Yep, that seems about right. And then again, we got some. We've got an extra little bit of scrim on the loincloth here. So, um, but that's a bit thicker. So we'll just use the hobby knife to to cut that off. So I just want to gently slice this off, just like that. There you go. So you see, if my hobby knife had been blunt, that would have been a bit more of a pain to do. But uh, you can see here, I've got it nice and clear. So one other bit that I want to show you is running down the back of the leg here and also over the buttocks and uh, on the uh, just under the arm um, there's a little line um, which is what happens when the mold slips slightly when it's being when it's the parts being formed um, now you really want to get rid of that um, because this is a naked body basically um, anything any imperfections like that are going to really show up on your paint job so you want to make sure you get rid of that sort of thing and the easiest way to do that is by using some sandpaper I've got three different grits of sandpaper here that I'm going to use so I've got the 300, 320 grit uh, which I'll start off with um, and then I'll move up to the 400 and then if we need to I'll finish off with the 600 so we'll start by cutting ourselves off a sheet of uh, sandpaper so like that and then we put our dust mask on because you don't really want to be breathing this stuff in as I mentioned before might look a bit silly and it might have muffled my voice slightly so I apologize for that but I don't really want a sore throat I can probably cut this in half there we go. and uh, literally you just find the bit that you want to sand off and you just kind of go to town on it. So 
So the 320 is actually probably a little bit too coarse for this, so we'll move up to the 400 and see how we get on. Yeah, that's a bit better. And you literally just have to keep working away at this gently, little by little, until you uh, until you get it down to how you want it to be. And see, I'm actually going to. Um, a lot of people like to wash their uh, like to do this part first, and then wash their models afterwards. Um, but I actually like to wash my models twice, so I tend to do them, uh, do give them one wash when I first get them, um, and then uh, after I've done this section, then I give them another this bit, then I give them another wash, um, just to get rid of any of the dust that's formed after I've uh, been sanding them, um, and it also uh, say it also helps to get rid of any. Uh, get rid of any uh, areas that I might have missed that have still got um, mold releasant on them. Just always remember that resin is a very soft material so it's quite easy to go too far with this sort of thing. Um, so just do a little bit at a time. Don't go too much, don't do too much in one go. Um, it's tempting with this sort of thing to get a Dremel out and start, uh, start Dremeling it. Um, but I actually prefer to use uh, I actually prefer to use uh, sandpaper by hand. Um, and the main reason for that is you can you can actually feel you've got more control over how much you're taking off um, than you do with a Dremel. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with a Dremel as a as a tool. You know, every it's, it's a tool like any other. You know, you have to use it for the right purposes. Um, but uh, for this particular job um, I think uh, I think sandpaper is probably probably better there we go you can see that mold line is now almost completely gone certainly along here and on the underside of the leg there you know, don't worry about this little discoloration I mean that's all going to go away once I've primed it and uh, this up here I mean it, it looks like it's still there but if you run your finger over it you can't really feel it and because that's going to be in shadow there anyway with the uh, with the shoulder blade, um, I'm not too worried about that particular bit, to be honest. And that's basically all there is to it. I mean, you, you just have to kind of keep going um, very gently, very carefully. Um, make sure you look on, uh, look on things like, for example, um, let's see if I can get this on camera. In that little ring on the ankle there, there's a little bit of scrim in there, so you just make sure that I get that out with the get that out with the hobby knife. Um, and you basically just carry on like that um, until you've got all your components cleaned up. Um, there's obviously quite a few of these to do with this particular kit, so uh, I'm going to be at this for a little while. But um, it's it's really important that you spend, you know, the more time you spend cleaning your models up at this stage. The better they're going to look when you've uh, when you've painted them. Um, I mean, if you've painted your model and you've uh, got mold lines and bits and pieces all over them, then it's just going to ruin the look. So it's it's better to spend a bit of extra time at this stage to clean them up and uh, get them looking good, um, and then you'll be so much more proud of the result afterwards. So uh, again, like with anything to do with forge roll, just take your time with it, don't rush, and uh, you'll get there in the end.